Parasha Bo. Perohim Habaim. Welcome in the name of Yeshua. Blessed is the one that comes in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah of Israel. Hallelujah. The Torah portion Bo begins in Exodus 10, 1 through chapter 13, verse 16. And I gather with you, beloved brethren, in the powerful name of Yeshua, and I bless you wherever you might be and whatever might be the moment in which you are listening. I bless you in the powerful name of Yeshua with the blessing that this same self Elohim ordered for the children of Israel. Ach, David, here you pronounce the blessing. Evarechecha Yeshua beishmerecha, Yaer Yeshua panav alecha beyechuneka, Esa Yeshua panav alecha beyasem lecha, Shalom, besamti shem shel Yeshua hamashiach alechem, beshem Yeshua hamashiach. Amen. It's a very good blessing to bless our little children, our children in general, beloved brethren. And we should be accustomed to do it, especially in the day of Shabbat, because this is a holy and blessed day. So the blessing flows on the day of Shabbat. And the blessing that we are, and the parasha that we are reading, Bo, about the children of Israel, and of the plagues that the Lord himself placed in Egypt. We just finished reading about the plague of hail. But before we continue speaking about this, we're going to give the kavod, the glory to Yeshua, our Elohim. Thank you. We give thanks to you, our Lord and our Master, Adonenu, Adon Yeshua, for everything you have given us. We call on your mercy and on your name, and we want to say to you that you are welcome in this place to teach us. And we open our hearts and our minds and our mouths so that it will be your teaching that will flow in this moment. We recognize you as our rabbi, as our teacher, and we honor you as our teacher. And we tell you that without you, we can't do it. You are our wisdom. You are our strength. You are our everything. And we need you in order to be able to understand. You are truth and you are life. Teach us about your truths. Direct us through your ways and bless us with the blessing that you have for your children, Yeshua. Give us revelation and wisdom and more of your truth. And we embrace you and we follow you. We follow the Lamb wherever He goes for. What do we have outside of you? Where can we go? We have decided to remain in your home. We like our Master. And we decided that we are going to be His servants because there is no better home than your house. One day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. And we choose to be in your house in this moment, on this hour, and this day, and forever. Lord, make your work in our homes, in the nations where we are, in the cities where we are, and transform the nations in this time of the end. Make your work in your servants, Lord Yeshua, in those who call upon your name, asking for your mercies. And we ask you that you reveal more of your truth and that in spirit and in truth they might go forward doing your will in this time, Yeshua. Rise up a great remnant of the holy ones of the last days of those who keep your commandments and have faith in you, Yeshua, and your testimony. All of those who have been called to respond like so. We ask you that you speak to them. You will repeat many times if they have not responded to your calling that you would repeat it, Yeshua, please for the glory of your name. And we praise and exalt the name of Yeshua, for there is no one like him, because he's the only one worthy, our King of Kavod, King of Glory, Melech HaKavod, our hero, our war. Yeshua, glory and praise to your name. Thank you for the sacrifice that you have done for us, and thank you for delivering us from Egypt. We give you thanks, Yeshua, because you have taken us out of the land of Egypt, of the house of bondage, in order to take us to freedom that is in following you, the freedom that is in your commandments, the freedom that is in the holy land and promised land that you swore to Abraham that he would give to him and to his descendants, because you are faithful to your covenant to your promises we bless your great and holy name and we pray this in the powerful name of yeshua the messiah of israel and to him be all the glory and all the exaltation well we have a small change in the way we're going to be reading the torah from now on until this moment i had principally read from the mechom mamre website of the jewish publication society bible 1917 version 
trying to always present all the corrections that were necessary in every bad translation. Now we're going to do something different from now on. We're going to use from an interlinear translation from the Hebrew to the English of the Masoretic text and it's not going to be so adapted or modified in order to be part of a theology or doctrine or even poetry. This is a literal translation and I will mention the case of the Aleph and the Tav to know in order to understand this. For the letter Aleph and the letter Tav are the first and the last letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet as they are presented in Psalm 119. Therefore, the Aleph and the Tav is a Hebrew word of two letters that appears very often in Scripture. This word that in modern Hebrew is pronounced et does not have a translation into any language. So every time this word appears in Hebrew scriptures, the translator will always omit it. And for those who heard the first portion of Genesis 1.1, we're able to receive some information about it where the first verse of the Torah says, translated into English, in the beginning created Elohim Aleph Tav, the heavens and Aleph Tav, the earth. Now here I am reading and mentioning the Aleph Tav in the part of the verse where it is. Now this is a mystery. The Aleph Tav is a mystery. It's not always found in the scriptures with a clear meaning. For example, in the first part of verse 1 of Genesis 1, in the beginning created Elohim Aleph Tav. Here it is clear that the Aleph Tav has a relationship with the Elohim and it is a mystery and in part we have the revelation that Yeshua gives us through Yohanan, John, in the Isle of Patmos there in the book of Revelation where the Lord reveals himself to Yohanan, John, and says, I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. You know that the Messiah, the Hebrew Messiah, speaks to the Hebrew prophet in the Hebrew language. So we're going to forget about the Greek here and we're going to begin to speak as the Lord spoke and we're going to begin to use his way of speaking and the revelation that the Lord himself gives us about the Hebrew language. Therefore, the Lord reveals himself as the Aleph and the Tav to John in the book of Revelation and it is repeated many times in the book of Revelations. In Revelations 1.11, 21.6, and 22.13. This has been defined as the Aleph Tav many times as one of the great mysteries of the Hebrew students and great teachers. But this has been revealed to those who believe in his name. And we praise the Lord of Lords, the Aleph Tav, Yeshua HaMashiach, Hallelujah. So every time that we read the Aleph Tav, or it appears the Aleph Tav, we're going to pronounce it and let the Ruach HaKodesh to reveal more as we continue reading. And of course, we're going to use the word of Elohim and we're going to call the Yud He Vav He as Yehu, which is a most simple form to mention this four letter name of which the Lord manifested himself in the past. So in parentheses, it is very similar to the name of Yeshua, the simple way of saying the name of of the Lord Yehu, just as it appears in many names in Hebrew, it might not be complete. It might be that there is a vowel missing in the pronunciation. And this word and name has been mentioned as Yehu Ha. Perhaps it was mentioned in that way, but we're going to limit ourselves to just pronounce it just as it is pronounced in the name so that we do not create controversy. In fact, that is not my idea to create controversy about a new way of pronouncing the name, this ancient name that the Lord manifested, but not give it a greater importance than the Lord wants to give because we know that we have the precious name, which is the name of Yeshua, because we know that Yeshua is the name of Yehu. May the name of Yeshua be always exalted. And also in order to pronounce in the scripture, as we're reading it, by the grace of the Lord, we will call it Yehu. So let's read from Exodus chapter 10, verse 1. And said Yehu to Moshe, Go into Pharaoh, for 
I have hardened Aleftav, his heart, and the hearts of his servants, that I may show signs of mine, these before him, that you may tell in the hearing of your son, and son of your son, Aleftav, the mighty things I have done in Egypt, and Aleftav, my signs which I have done among them, that you may know that I, Yehu, so came in Moshe and Aaron to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says Yehu, Elohe of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let go my people that they may serve me. Or else if refuse you to let go my people, behold, will I bring tomorrow locusts in your territory, and they shall cover Aleftav the face of the earth, so that no one will be able to see it, Aleftav, the earth, and they shall say, Aleftav, the residue of what is left, which remains to you from the hail, and they shall eat every Aleftav tree, which grows up for you out of the field, and they shall fill your houses, and the houses of all your servants, and the houses of all all Egypt, which neither have seen your fathers nor fathers your fathers since the day that they were on the earth. To day this, and he returned and went out from Pharaoh and said, Servants of Pharaoh, to him, until when shall be this to us a snare? Let Aleftav, the men that they may serve, Aleftav, Yehu, their Elohim, Elohehem. Pay attention, the Lord dwells among his people, and when he says, send Aleftav, he's saying two things, send the men and send Aleftav, because is the same Aleftav, the same Lord, the beginning and the end, he himself, the only one Elohim that dwells among his people, and then they may serve Aleftav, Yehu Elohehem, that they may serve Yehu, the Elohim of theirs. So it says two things, and that they might serve Aleph Tav, and they serve Yehu, because the Aleph Tav is our Elohim. The logic of grammar of man does not serve for the text that Moshe is writing. It doesn't work. And this is why this is one of the greatest books where the Lord speaks behind everything that Moshe is writing. The Lord is speaking and saying something as it happens many times when people speak. In the same way here we see clearly that the Lord is manifesting that it is time to serve Aleftav and the children of Israel are going to serve Aleftav. They're going to serve Yehu. Two phrases in one. Not always is this clear, the presence of the Lord when the Aleph Tav appears, but here we see it clearly. There are times where we can't see it so clearly, but I can assure you, it is there. I continue to read. Here they speaking to Pharaoh. Do not yet you know that destroyed is Egypt, so that we brought again Aleph Tav, Moshe, and Aharon to Pharaoh. So here again, we see the Aleph Tav, and we can see that the Lord spared his spirit in Moshe and Aharon. So we brought again Aleph Tav, Moshe, and Aleph Tav, Aharon to Pharaoh. Can you see it, brethren? It is beautiful. It's practically another story being told in the same text. And he said to them, Go, serve Aleph Tav, Yehu, your Elohim, who and who this going and said, Moshe, with our young and our old, we will go with our sons and our daughters, with our flocks and our herds, we will go for a feast to Yehu, we must hold. And he said to them, had better be Yehu with you when I let go you and Aleftav, your little ones, beware for evil before the face. Not so. Go now, you men, and serve Aleftav, Yehu. For that is what you desired, and were driven out they from it, presence of Pharaoh, and said Yehu to Moshe, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat it, every herb of the land, it all that has left the hail. So stretched Moshe his rod over the land of Egypt, and Yehu brought an wind east on the land all day that, and all night morning, when it was an wind, the east brought the locust and went up over all the land of Egypt and rested on all the territory of Egypt. 
severe, very, previously, no there had been such locust as they, and after them nor shall there be such. For they covered the face of all the earth, so that was darkened the land, and they ate, aleftav, every herb of the land, and aleftav, all the fruit of the trees which had left the hail. So not there remained anything green on the trees or on the plants of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. And in haste Pharaoh called Moshe and Aaron and said, I have sinned against Yehu, your Elohim, and against you. And therefore forgive please my sin only this once and entreat Yehu your Elohim that he may take away from me only Aleftav death this. So he went out from Pharaoh and entreated unto Yehu and returned Yehu a wind west mighty very and which took away Aleftav the locust and blew them into the sea red. Not there remain locust one in all the territory of Egypt, but harden Yehu it heart of Pharaoh, and not he did let go the sons of Israel. And said Yehu to Moshe, Stretch out your hand toward the heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, and even may be felt darkness. So stretched Moshe at his hand toward heaven, and there was darkness thick in all the land of Egypt three days, not they did see one aleft of another, nor did rise anyone from this place three days, but all the sons of Israel had light in their dwellings. Here he is describing a darkness unlike anything we've ever seen. And it is not this darkness that you have at night. This darkness is one where not even candles can light it. This is a spiritual darkness that has to do with the presence of the Aleftah, the same self Elohim, who is Elohim, who is the light. As Yeshua said, I, the light, have come to the world. I am the light of the world, he said. So this absence of light must have been terrible, for no one was able to move within three days because there was no light beloved brethren. What a degree of darkness. May this remain in our heart and in our memory so that we might know that in the future the Lord will speak to us and help us to understand things concerning this. Verse 24, And called Pharaoh to Moshe and said, Go, serve Aleftav Yehu only, your flocks and your herds, let be kept back, also your little ones, let go with you. But he said, Moshe also, you must give us sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice to Yehu our Elohim, and also our livestock shall go with us, not shall be left behind a hoof, for some of them we must take to serve Aleftav Yehu our Elohim, and even we not to know how we must serve Aleftav Yehu until we arrive there. But harden Yehu Aleftav heart of Pharaoh, and not he would let them go, and said to him, Pharaoh, get away from me, take heed yourself no more and see my face, for in the day you see my face you shall die. And said Moshe, well you have spoken, never again more I will see your face. Chapter 11 And said Yehu to Moshe, Yet plague one I will bring on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward he will let go you from this place. When he lets go altogether, surely he will drive out you from this place. Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let ask every man from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor articles of silver and articles of gold, and gave Yehu Aleftav favor the people in the sight of Egypt. Moreover, the man Moshe, great, very, in the land of Egypt, in the sight of the servants of Pharaoh, and in the sight of the people. Well, what will happen now will be one of the most impressive and tremendous things that we know in the story of the people, the holy people of the people of Israel, the exodus of Egypt, where the Lord himself, after sending so many plagues, he will send a plague that will make Pharaoh to accept the petition, the request, and it will be a day of celebration for all time and for all centuries from now on, because it is a tremendous day where the Lord will bring out his people from the house of bondage to take them to freedom. Well, it's one day, it will actually happen in many days, and it will not be in just this one day where they will come out. There will be a few days, and this is one of the greatest happenings 
that came to pass in history and has been remembered and has been ordered to be a memorial for all centuries. And Yeshua himself will do so and will celebrate this day of Pesach, as it will be called. Yeshua himself will do it, but further on he will establish it as a remembrance of him, because it is Yeshua that takes us out of Egypt. I had, as I told you a while ago, that after quickly after the Lord rescued me, he gave me a word and he said, you are exiting Egypt. So all of us are exiting Egypt, as I had said, and it is to Yeshua to whom we give the honor. And that's why we will commemorate the celebration that will be established later on in remembrance of Yeshua, as he said. But besides that, all that I am saying and speaking, that this will be the most impressive, important, tremendous days and most remembered days of history. On the side of all that, of everything I am saying, there will begin this great exodus towards the promised land that will take at the end 40 years on the side of all that this event will not be the greatest event in the history of humanity that the Lord will do with the children of Israel but the prophet Jeremiah says and reminds us and warns us in Jeremiah 16 15 that another event is coming that will leave this event as a small one reading from verse 14 therefore behold the days come says Yehu that it shall no more be said as Yehu lives that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt but as Yehu lives that brought up the children of the Israel from the land of the north and from all the countries whither he had driven them and I will bring them back into their land that I gave unto their fathers so the prophet Jeremiah here gives us a warning that there is a day coming that this exodus will be left in the back and forgotten because the last exodus does which will be greater and more impressive than this one that we will no longer say as the Lord lives that brought the children of Israel but as the Lord lives that brought the children of Israel of all the lands each of the feasts of the Lord also is a prophecy so here we're going to read the first feast here the feast of the first month but this use will be established as the first feast the Lord will give further on the instruction that there should be another feast which will be called the second Passover over that will point prophetically to the return of the children of Israel to the land but of all the nations not just of Egypt to all the nations which he had dispersed them therefore the books of the prophets are filled with the prophecies of the return of the children of Israel of all the nations and that is what we're getting closer to in this time that prophecy of Jeremiah has not been fulfilled and it will be fulfilled soon therefore let us prepare ourselves brethren because the Lord will make to return his descendants the descendants of Israel so this is an introduction to what is coming and now we continue reading from Exodus 11 verse 4 and said Moshe thus says Yehu about midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt and shall die all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne even to the firstborn of the maidservant who behind the handmill and all the firstborn of the animals and there shall be a cry great throughout all the land of Egypt such as like it not was nor shall before like it again but against any the sons of Israel not shall move a dog its tongue against man or beast that you may know that does make a difference Yehu between Egypt and Israel and shall come down all your servants these to me and bow down to me saying get out you and all the people who follow you and after that I will go out and he went out from Pharaoh in great anger but said Yehu to Moshe not will heed you Pharaoh so that may be multiplied my wonders in the land of Egypt so Moshe and Aaron did Aleftav all the wonders these before Pharaoh and hardened Yehu Aleftav heart of Pharaoh and not he did let go Aleftav the sons of Israel out of his land in chapter 12 it is good to remember because it describes and also in chapter 13 about the Passover with great detail these are the most precise instructions that we have about Passover also explained in Leviticus 23 and Deuteronomy but these are the original instructions of the Passover with great detail 
And it is a great blessing in order to be able to read it. Chapter 12 And spoke Yahu to Moshe and Aharon in the land of Egypt, saying, Month this, your, shall be beginning of months, the first it to you, month of the year. Head of months is the first month. The term head is used very much, for example, saying the first month of the year, or the first day of the year, is said Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. It is used the word Rosh many times for many words. For example, the Prime Minister is Rosh Hamenshela, the head of the government. And to say something like um, bodyguard, Shomer Rosh, the one that protects the head. So the term head is very much used. And so the Lord here is establishing that this month is the head of the month. It is the first month. And with this, the Lord establishes the first month, the Aviv. If you remember from the previous portion at the end of chapter 9, it says in verse 31, and the flax and the barley were smitten, for the barley was in ear, or had sprouted, and the flax was in bloom. In the Hebrew it reads, and the barley was aviv. This is the month of the aviv barley. This is the month of the aviv, and this is the first month established by the Lord himself in Exodus chapter 12, and this is for all of us who fear and believe in our Elohim and in his Messiah, that we might know that the head or beginning of the month of the year is in the month of the Aviv. And this is where the barley has sprouted in Israel, in Jerusalem later on. Verse 3 Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month and shall take for himself every man a lamb according to the house of father a lamb for household. And if it's too small the household for the lamb and let take it him and his neighbors next to his house according to the number of the persons. Man, according to his eating, you shall make your count for the lamb. Lamb without blemish, a male year of the first shall be your from the sheep or from the goats. You may take it and you shall keep it until four and ten day of the month. So you take the lamb on the 10th day and until the day 14 you keep it in your home and shall kill it the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel at twilight in between the two evenings is more clearly in Hebrew more like between the two dusks you take the lamb and you sacrifice it the lamb gives off its life on the 14th day between the two evenings. This is understood in two ways. The phrase ben ha'arabaim is between the two evenings or between the two dusk. They have come to the conclusion of these verses that it means between the time where the sun is going down and it actually gets dark. That that's when you will sacrifice it. But the instruction here will be fulfilled by the Messiah between the two evenings as well because it will be a complete day between the beginning or the ending of the 13th day when the sun goes down into the 14th day as the 15th day begins and the Lord will fulfill all these things with great detail and with all the instructions. What we don't fully understand is that when you omit the Aleph Tav in scriptures we're not able to clearly understand what the prophecy is saying concerning the instruction of how the Aleph Tav will fulfill each of these commandments. It is much more what we don't understand than what we do understand about how the Lord himself fulfilled the whole of the Torah in his precious sacrifice. But despite this, we cannot forget that the Torah has been made that it might be understood by all. The Torah is not a sealed book. Farmers, simple people of the land can hear it. The Lord himself has ordered that the Torah be read every seven years on the year of redemption in Jerusalem before the whole assembly. And many of the people that were listening were people who did not know how to read or write. So what the commandment says is what we must do. What happens is that we're always looking for a prophecy in the Torah himself. And what is the Lord saying there himself? But of course, in order to be able to see that, we need revelation from the Ruach, from the Holy Spirit. And we need to believe that it is so. In order to see revelation, we must believe that there is revelation in order to understand. In order to see the revelation of Yeshua, it is necessary to believe. Continuing on verse 7. And they shall take 
some of the blood and put it on two of the doorposts and on the lintel of the houses which they eat it in and they shall eat aleftav the flesh on night this roasted in fire and with unleavened bread with bitter herbs and they shall eat it this is indeed a feast and it's forever but is a day of memorial to remember this day to you a memorial zikaron in hebrew this is why yeshua will say tazu sot le zikroni do this in remembrance of me. Do it in memory of me. This is a day for remembrance. This is a day for you as a memorial. Do this in remembrance of me. The day of Pesach, the Lord instructs that we must keep it in remembrance or in memorial of him. Can you see it, brethren? This has completely been taken out of context and has created a rite or tradition that has nothing to do with the instruction that Yeshua gave us. The Lord himself was the Passover lamb. This is why we celebrate the Pesach in remembrance of him, because he gave over his life for us on this day. And therefore, we must remember him on this day. And he did not give us this right to do with bread and wine to eat it. He says, and he instructs us to do Passover, Pesach, in remembrance of him. Therefore, the instructions of Passover are the ones that the Lord will require of us to come together. So when we come to celebrate Pesach, we cannot do it in an unclean manner. Later on, he will give the instruction to Moshe. What does it mean? It means we have to be pure spiritually without any unclean spirits, spirits of resentment, animosity, hatefulness, perdition, which is done downfall and doom without any spirits of selfishness so that we are pure in order to celebrate the Passover, Pesach. This will be formed later on and will become like a tradition or a rite where they will require of people that they would not be in sin in order to do this rite where the instruction, the original instruction is what we are reading now, that we must be pure in order to celebrate the Pesach. We will celebrate it, but now with the Lamb, who is Yeshua, and in remembrance of Him, the Lamb will be present because Yeshua will be present. Now we don't need to sacrifice another Lamb anymore because we have the Lamb of Elohim, which we have chosen. Verse 15. Seven days unleavened bread you shall eat on the day first you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread and shall be cut off person that from Israel from the day first until the day the seventh. Now the Lord is explaining two things. And he explains about the day of Pesach, which is the 14th day of the first month. And now the Pesach will begin this feast of seven days, which are of the matzot, the unleavened bread for seven days. And it says, and on the first day, you will remove the leavening on the first day. So the Lord instructs that the lamb of Pesach and the instructions of Pesach will be done with your belt around your waist, with a staff or walking stick, with sandals on your feet, ready to go and in haste. This celebration is done without leavening, with matzot, with unleavened bread and the lamb. And now today we are going to eat matzot, unleavened bread only. And they will be on the next day from these days gives the instruction the first day the leavening will be removed from our homes that is in the first day of the feast the house will be cleaned up of all leavening this is what the torah says and it is necessary to read more verses concerning with this leviticus 23 and other ones in order to have the full concept i explain it to you as the lord has shown it is a sure thing to follow him verse 16 and on the day first and on occasion holy on that day and on occasion holy there shall be for you manner of work no shall be done on them but which that must eat every person that only may be prepared by you so shall observe unleavened bread or the feast of for on the same day this i will have brought your armies aleftav out of the land of egypt and therefore shall you observe aleftav 
day this throughout your generations as an ordinance everlasting. Hallelujah. We are going to celebrate Yeshua, the Aleph and the Tav, an perpetual ordinance or an everlasting ordinance in the first, in this case month, on four and ten day of the month at evening, you shall eat matzot, which is unleavened bread, until day of the first and twenty, the month at evening. The first feast is the fourteenth and it is the feast of Pesach, the Passover. And there comes afterwards the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where the first day and the last day are Shabbaton, which means no work. And during these seven days, there is no unleavened bread to be consumed or eaten, but the Pesach is celebrated with unleavened bread. Therefore, on the first day, on the day 14, on the day of Pesach, there is still leavening in the home, but the Pesach is eaten without leavening. And on the day 15, when the feast begins, on the first day of the feast, it will be the day where all leavening is taken out of the house. Verse 19 says, Seven days leaven no shall be found in your houses, since whoever eats what is leavened and shall be cut off, same person that from the congregation of Israel, whether a stranger or native of the land. These are for the seven days of the Feast of Matzot. Anything leaven not you shall eat in all your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened bread. Matzot and called Moshe for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take for yourselves lambs according to your families and kill the Passover, and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip in the blood that in the basin and strike unto the lintel and to the doorpost with the blood that in the basin, and you none shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Nowadays it is understood as that the doorposts are the posts that are on the sides of the door. Therefore in that place you had to place a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood and wet the doorposts and the sides of the door. The word basaf that can be translated as basin or in basin or can also be translated as on the threshold of the door and this is the basin with the blood. For I will pass through Yehu to strike Egypt and when he sees on the blood the lintel and on to the doorpost and will pass Yehu over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you and you shall observe Aleph Tav thing this as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. And it shall come to pass when you come to the land which will give Yehu to you, just as he promised that you will keep Aleph Tav service this, and it shall be when say to you your children, what service this do you mean, or you mean by this, that you shall say the sacrifice of Passover it Yehu who passed over the houses of the sons of Israel in Egypt when he struck Egypt and our households delivered, so bowed their heads the people and worshipped. Hallelujah. And went away and did the sons of Israel just as had commanded Yehu, Aleph Tav, Moshe, and Aaron. So they did. And it came to pass at midnight that Yehu struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who in the dungeon and all the firstborn of livestock. So rose Pharaoh in the night, the, he and all his servants and all Egypt. And there was a cry great in Egypt, for not a house were not one dead. And he called for Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the sons of Israel, and go serve Aleph Tav Yehu, as you have said. Also your flocks and your herds take as you have said, and be gone, and bless also me. And urge Egypt, the people, in haste, that they might send out of the land, for they said, We all dead. So took the people their dough before it was leavened, their kneading bowls, having bound up in their clothes on their shoulders, 
the case of the dough and the leavening and that which leavens, the dough will leaven after days if the dough is done with whole wheat flour and it is allowed to rest for many days naturally, it will leaven, it will sour like the sourdough and it will be worked like so to make bread and it was conserved a little bit of the previous dough and was mixed with the new dough so that the new dough would leaven because the older dough that has been left a long time has a very high content of leavening. Therefore, the children of Israel will come out with their dough that are covered up because they cannot allow them to leaven because this is the way that bread was made. And of course, you know that bread is vital to survive. Verse 35, And the sons of Israel had done according to the word of Moshe, and they asked from Egypt articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing. And yet who had given Alephta favor the people in the sight of Egypt so that they granted them. Thus they plundered Alephta of Egypt and journeyed the sons of Israel from Ramesses to Sukkot about 600,000 on foot, men besides children. And also mixed a multitude went up with them and flocks and herds, livestock, a deal of great. And they baked Alephta of the dough which they had brought out of Egypt cakes of unleavened for not it was leavened because they were driven out of Egypt and not could wait and provisions nor had they prepared for themselves. Now the sojourn of the sons of Israel who lived in Egypt thirty years four and hundred years and it came to pass at the end of thirty years and four hundred the years and it came to pass on the same day this very day that went out all the armies of Yehu from the land of Egypt a night of solemn of servant it to Yehu for bringing them out of the land of Egypt that night this of Yehu a solemn of servants for all the sons of Israel there is no better day to have a night watch than the day of Pesach. That is the day by commandment to have a night watch. In fact, the Lord will instruct that people should not get out of their home throughout the whole night, but and stay inside the door under the protection of the precious blood. And this instruction is valid until today for the day of Pesach. So as we can see, the instruction is more of a family instruction. It is not a day where you have a big gathering, like a congregational gathering, but it is a day that is celebrated with your family or the family with your neighbor and no bigger than that. You're supposed to remain the entire night in a vigil, in a watch until the next day and not until the next day can you come out of your house. There is a great difference, beloved brethren, concerning what the Torah says and what is celebrated traditionally for Pesach. What I'm presenting to you is how the Torah says to celebrate it this day because it is understood that how it is celebrated traditionally is not how our Elohim instructed us to do. And it is, should be clear that we are now learning that we are starting from zero, like babies without knowledge. And the Lord is instructing us and he is having us drink from his wonderful Torah without any leavening, as the text says in the Torah. Verse 43. And said Yehu to Moshe ve Aharon, This the ordinance of the Passover, any son of a foreigner not shall eat it, but every servant of man who is bought for money, and when you have circumcised him, then he may eat it. A sojourner and hired servant not shall eat it. In house one it shall be eaten, not you shall carry outside the house any of the flesh outside and bones, nor shall break of its and the sojourner or the stranger or the foreigner cannot eat of it. The instruction is of the not believers, the unbelievers that are not disciples of Yeshua cannot eat of the Pesach. They cannot come into the house to eat of the Pesach. He who is not circumcised, as it is written, if he is a servant of the house, must be circumcised. And we know about the circumcision of the heart that is necessary. Yes, it is necessary to eat the Pesach in Yeshua. That does not mean now that the circumcision has been invalidated or has passed on or is obsolete. 
I want to say one more thing. The children of Israel will spend 40 years in the desert and they will not practice circumcision but until after the 40 years when they have crossed the Jordan. And Yehosha, Yehoshea takes the place of Moshe and there he will instruct them to, the Lord will instruct them to be circumcised. What I'm trying to show you is that the instruction of the Lord is not absolute law, but it is an instruction that is done with love. And our Elohim is a loving Elohim, and He's instructing us to do certain things. And if we're not able to do them for some reason, and a person is not circumcised for whatever reason, the Lord is merciful to allow him to come in and celebrate the Passover as He was merciful to the children of Israel while they were there in the desert for 40 years. Years. Can you see it? And they were there for 40 years in the desert. It wasn't one year or two or three or 10 or 20. There were 40 years where they had not circumcised the children and they had not kept the covenant that the Lord had instructed to Abraham that every man has to be circumcised on the eighth day. Do you want to be surprised? Well, this is surprising. And it is to also understand the heart of Elohim. Truly, we are nothing. Our thoughts are so absolute and we try to understand in an absolute way and so harsh in comparison to the loving heart that Yeshua has with us. He makes the change in our lives. We are his servants and the change that he does in our lives, he does it in the speed that he desires to do it. If he wants to delay for 40 years, he can delay for 40 years. If he wants to delay one day, he does it in one day and glory to his name. Verse 40. Five. A sojourner and a higher servant not shall eat it. In house one it shall be eaten. Not you shall carry outside the house any of the flesh outside and bones, nor shall you break one of it. And this is why no bone of Yeshua was broken. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when dwells with you a stranger and to keep or wants to keep the Passover to Yehu, let be circumcised his all males. Then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as a native of the land. For uncircumcised person, no shall eat it. The Pesach, again, is not for unbelievers. It must be for disciples of Yeshua, and it is celebrated in intimacy. You cannot invite people who are not believers, people who do not recognize the Lord, and who do not follow His ways, who are not disciples of Him. Law 1 shall be for native-born, for the stranger who dwells among you. Thus did all the sons of Israel as commanded Yehu, Aleph, Tav, Moshe, and Aleph, Tav, Aharon, so they did. And it came to pass on the very same day this that brought Yehu, Aleph Tav, the sons of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, according to their armies. Chapter 13 And spoke Yehu to Moshe, saying, Consecrate to me all the firstborn opens, whatever the womb among the sons of Israel, of man and beast, is mine, it. And said Moshe to the people to remember or of memorial, Aleph Tav, day this in which you went out of Egypt out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand brought out Yehu, you of this place, and no shall be eaten leavened bread. On this day you are going out in the month of Abib, and it shall be when brings you Yehu into the land of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Hivite and Jebusite, which he swore your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, that you shall keep it Aleph Tav service this in month this. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on day seventh a feast to Yehu. Matzot, unleavened bread, shall be eaten seven days, and no shall be seen among you leaven bread, nor shall be seen among you leaven in all your quarters. And you shall tell your sons in day that, saying, Because of this did Yehu for me when it came up from Egypt, and it shall be to you as a sign on your hand, as a memorial between your eyes, that may be law of Yehu in your mouth. For with hand mighty has brought you, Yehu, out of Egypt. Therefore you shall keep Aleph Tab ordinance this in its season from year to year and it shall be when brings you Yehu into the land of the Canaanite as he swore to you and your fathers and gives it to you then you shall set apart all that open womb 
to Yehu, that is every firstborn that comes from an animal which have you, the males, to Yehu, but every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, and if not you redeem it, then you shall break its neck, and all the firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. So shall it be when asks you your son in time to come, saying, What this that you shall say to him? By strength of hand brought us Yehu out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And it shall come to pass when was stubborn Pharaoh about letting us go, that killed Yehu all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, and from the firstborn of man, and to the firstborn of beast, upon thus I sacrifice to Yehu. All that open the womb, males, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. And it shall be as a sign on your hand, and as frontlets between your eyes, for by strength of hand brought us Yehu out of Egypt. When the Lord speaks that it shall be as a sign on your hand and as frontlets between your eyes, it is saying that it is very important, of extreme importance, and we must remember it. And this terminology will be used later on. The Lord will take all the firstborn, but later on he will make a change. And instead of having the firstborns of the men will be his, he will take the Levites to be his. Well, we finish with this, the portion of the Torah, this beautiful portion where we have learned so many things about Pesach, Passover, and the sacrifice of Yeshua. And we ask Yeshua that he would continue to teach us and to place things in the truth and that he deliver us from all lies. This accounting of the Pesach is one of the greatest happenings for it is the greatest for us. And it will be later on when the same self Yeshua, the same himself Elohim will manifest himself and bring his life to bring to fulfillment the instructions of the Torah so that we might be blessed. In fact, we don't deserve what Yeshua has done for us. And we are ashamed of our faults and our failures and our shortcomings because He has loved us so much. And we give Him thanks for He is the one that will take our sins and also fulfilling not just the sacrifice of Passover, Pesach, but also of the Day of Atonement, being that He is the one that will, will shed His blood and will be placed on the mercy seat that we who might receive forgiveness of sin. Great is his name in the whole earth. So now we finish with a prayer. Thank you, Yeshua, for the Pesach, for the instruction of Pesach. Thank you for your instructions and commandments. Thank you for teaching us concerning your truth. Thank you for you, because you fulfilled the Pesach. And we give you so many thanks from our full hearts, the bottom of our hearts, because your precious blood protects us as a, an impenetrable shield from the enemy. And we give you thanks, Yeshua, for all of this. And we ask you that you continue to teach each one of us these instructions that we might be able to understand and have more wisdom so that we are able to more greatly exalt you knowing in greater detail how wonderful your sacrifice was and how much you have loved us and how much you have blessed us with these instructions of the Torah which liberate the blessings over us nowadays and we give you thanks for your Torah of Moshe and for the instruction and for taking us out of Egypt and for giving our sins and for taking us out of the house of bondage so that you might make us free as you have said him who the son sets free is free indeed thank you Yeshua for liberating us and for taking us out of Egypt and taking us to the promised land Yeshua we want to go and be obedient to you and go directly to the promised land and believe you in all that you promise on the way. And Lord, we decide that we will have a heart like Yehoshea and Caleb who followed forward knowing that your powerful hand will destroy all our enemies. Thank you, Yeshua. Give us wisdom so that we might explain and teach our children concerning the wondrous works that you have done. And also write on our hearts these commandments that we might be able to celebrate the Pesach as you have instructed in our homes. And we give you thanks for this instruction and we praise and exalt your precious and holy name. And it is all concerning you. It all speaks about you. And we, in memory of you and remembrance of you, we celebrate the Pesach. And we give you the glory to you, our Lamb of Elohim. Thank you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Shalom al-Israel. Peace be over Israel. Amen.